All right, it is 10.01, and so we can um, begin, and I'm sure people, um, some people might uh, trickle in a little bit, but um, all right. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Renaissance and Wolf SSL live webinar, Realizing Your Root of Trust Security into Your IoT Devices for Tomorrow. This is brought to you by both Renaissance and Wolf SSL. Uh, today's speakers are Nalima Charosia, Senior Staff Application Man uh, Engineer at Renaissance Electronics, and also Chris Conlon, Engineering Manager at Wolf SSL. Uh, I am Gian Park, and I am one of the marketing interns for Wolf SSL, and I will be moderating this webinar. Uh, so in this webinar, all at attendees will be in listen-only mode, uh, if you have any questions, please use the Q&A box uh, down below, um, as well as we will host the Q&A session following the presentation. Uh, the webinar is also recorded and will be made available on demand shortly. Uh, so now I would like to hand it over to Nalima. Okay. So welcome everyone. Can people hear me? Okay, yes. all right. Okay, let's get started. So thanks everyone for joining today. My name is Nilima Chaurasia. I'm happy to present this webinar, Realizing Root of Trust Security into your IoT device for tomorrow. Uh, let me share the quick agenda for this session. So, uh, so I, uh, I'll be starting um, uh, by highlighting the necessity of security in embedded IoT devices. What security feature set you should look in microcontroller when designing your next IoT product. And then I'm going to talk about how Renesis RX solution can help, help you to bring your secure IoT product. Uh, after that, uh, after the RX overview, um, Chris is going to present Wolf SSL product lineup and, it, and the feature set. What is the benefit of using RX hardware security T-safe with Wolf SSL product? And finally, we will end this webinar by summarizing the key points with Q&A session. So believe it or not, the world is changing faster than ever, especially the technology. The emerging trend and technology is changing the ecosystem around us. Uh, the um, lifestyle is getting digitized more than ever, and IoT devices are getting personal with more devices around us. Everything is expected to be wireless in the coming years, sharing more data and application with the cloud. This is making the IoT device more complex as security is becoming critical parameter to launch these devices. So as far as security is concerned, it is fairly new to the embedded devices. In earlier days, the solution was mostly software-based solution where vendor just provide the security library to developer. But thanks to the security problem commonly found in these IoT devices, they present attacker many low hanging fruit. These forces the developer to design the security beyond using the software libraries. With all these changes, the developer who are designing the IoT product now cannot just design the device the old fashioned way and need the security mindset and approach. So security requires a particular mindset. The security professional, at least the good ones, see the world differently. They cannot use a computer without wondering about the security vulnerability. So good engineering involves thinking about how things can be made to work. However, the security mindset involves thinking about how things can be made to fail. It involves thinking like an attacker. So if you don't see the world uh, the way attackers see, you will never notice the most security problem. Hence, the security requires a solid foundation. It has to be designed since the product inception and cannot be sprinkled in the midway of the product. For the ideal product, the security should be tightly linked to the underlying hardware such as microcontroller. So now the question is, do you need security? The answer is yes. If your product is connected wired or wirelessly to the cloud or to another devices in the network. You, the, you, you also need security if your product is upgradable, which can be over the air firmware upgrade to fix the bugs or to release a new version of the software or to enhance new feature set in the product. You also need security if you store valuable information inside the device, such as keys, certificates, 
password or any proprietary algorithm. So let's look at the feature set that you should look in the microcontroller for your next IoT application. So the first thing you should consider whether the device has the memory protection unit. Uh, the memory protection unit limits CPU access to the certain memory areas and helps protecting the software IP from external data access. The second important feature is hardware encryption, which not only reduces the memory uses, but also accelerates the security performance. The hardware encryption requires a dedicated hardware crypto block inside the microcontroller. Um, in case of the Renesis RX devices, this is supported using the TCP hardware. The other feature you should consider are the special features like the two random number generator, the chip unique ID, and this can be used to encrypt the key inside the microcontroller. The flash area protection and the ID code protection is also important. The flash area protection protects the flash data against accidental programming and erasing. The ID code protection also protect tampering the device code uh, by progr a programmer and the debugger. And beyond these features, certification, certification and endorsement is also crucial and very important factor for the device selection. Renesis is leader in microcontroller and micro, uh, microprocessor business. We have more than 30% of the worldwide market share. Our rich portfolio of microcontroller includes from eight and 16 bit microcontroller to all the way up to 64-bit microprocessor. Our microcontroller and microprocessor are available in a wide area of memory, peripherals, and package options. Renesis RL78 and RX microcontroller is based on the Renesis proprietary core. RA Synergy and RZ devices is based on the ARM ecosystem. The RA family is the newest device an addition to the ARM MCU lineup and provide the enhanced security with trust zone implementation. So Renesis is not new to the MCU industry. We are celebrating the 10th anniversary of the RX microcontroller. Since its launch in 2009, we have shipped over 600 million devices for various industrial and consumer market, which requires the high quality product. RX provides the complete solution for developing the security application. This includes the MCU with hardware security called TCIP, software with, uh, which includes TCIP driver, secure bootloader, um, and the key wrapping service to, uh, to allow and manage the uh, user keys, and various kits for evaluating and developing the uh, RX TCIP based solution. So here is a quick lineup of the RX MCU. Um, the RX family consists of the four product series, RX 100, RX 200, RX 600, and RX 700 family. So RX 700 and 600 family series provide the fastest performance and include most advanced security functions. RX 200 family delivers an optimal balance of the power efficiency and high performance and also includes security in, uh, in some devices. RX100 series is the entry-level product designed to have the extremely low power consumption. Overall, these four series provide a range of products that provide seamless scalability from small scale to large scale application. As you can see from this, um, from this uh, slide, there are, the, there are the two types of the security, TCIP and the TCIP Lite. This depends on the which RX device is used. So for example, RX 700 and 600 supports most of the TCIPs and the RX 200 device supports the TCIP Lite. I will share the more detail uh, uh, about the TCIP and TCIP Lite in my later slides. So as uh, hardware security in RX MCU is called the TCIP. So TCIP stands for the Trusted Secure IP. It is a single chip solution, which includes complete security and MCU functionality in one chip. So inside the MCU, TCIP device includes a safe area, which includes an encryption engine, storage for raw keys, and a hidden root key. The key is stored inside the TCIP device 
tied to a unique ID of the device. And because of this, the key from one device will not work on a different device uh, from the same family. TCF hardware area is accessed only by the TCF driver software provided by the Renesis. So TCIP does not accept plain text key from the user. Hence the user key needs to be the managed and registered outside the TCIP hardware. The user key needs to be encrypted before it can be input to the TCIP devices. This is done by the key wrapping service provided by the Renesis. The user key wrapping requires provisional key and that also needs to be registered and managed outside the TCIP hardware. With the key wrapping process, the raw key is not handled by the Renesis directly and therefore it can be managed safely by the user. So Renesis key wrapping is done by the Renesis um, DLM server application. This can be accessed online and it can be accessed from anywhere. The user needs to create an account to access the service. After the registration, the user can register user key and provision key to get a wrapped user key and provision key, which can be input to the TCIP devices. So as I mentioned, the RX devices has two, version, two versions of the security hardware, which depends on which RX device is used. The full security function addition, uh, version is called the TCIP and limited feature version is called the TCIP Lite. So this slide shows the key difference between the TCIP and TCIP Lite feature. So as you can see from like the slide, for the common key cryptography fu function, both TCIP and TCIP Lite supports the AES um, uh, 128 and 256 with ECD, CBC, and the GCM and CCM. Um, the, the full feature also supports additional cryptographic functions such as TD, uh, TDES and the public key encryption RSA e and ECC and hashing function SHA1 and the SHA256 uh, and MD5. Um, so RX device, uh, both version supports the message authentication and random number generator. TC full edition also support SSL and TLS supporting function which is very helpful for the IoT device which requires cloud connectivity. So though there is a difference in the feature in the TCIP and TCIP Lite, Renesis provides the uh, TCIP driver, a secure boot and the secure firmware update driver for both TCIP and TCIP Lite. So TCIP uh, driver uh, binary and application node can be downloaded from the Renesis website. The latest version is 1.10, which has been released recently. And the binary is available the free of charge. But if you if you need to get the hold of full source code, you can contact your local FAE to provide you the full source code. The TCIP driver is certified by the CAVP, uh, Cryptographic Algorithm Validation Program. RX231 device is the first Renesis MCU, which has received CAVP um, for encryption algorithm for AES and random number bit generation. RX65N and RX65 device also has obtained the CAVP for RSA and SHA in addition to the AES and random number bit generation. The certification results can be checked from the NIST website by searching uh, the keyword TSIP or by certification number listed here in this slide. So as I mentioned before, Renesis provides security solution kits that can be used to evaluate or develop the IoT application. For security applications, there are three different solution kits offered, RSK, Envision Kit, and the Partner Kit. The RSK kit, the selection of these kits depends on the application. Uh, the RSK kit is the very popular among the developer and it is available for the every RX family. So it is a fully featured kit that comes with the complete development tools, including the emulator. So you don't have to buy any additional tools to um, begin your development. The Envision kit is ideally suited for the HMI application as it comes with the WQVGA LCD display with 2D drawing engine. 
And the Invision Kit also has an onboard debugger and does not require any additional tools for the debugging. So GR Rose is our partner solution kit based on the RX65 and device. The kit comes with the Wi-Fi and provides an easy connection to the AWS IoT using AWS Free Arta, uh, Free Arta Certificate Site software provided by the Renesis. So here is the software architecture of the RX device when developing the IoT solution using Wolf SSL libraries. As you can see, the Renesis provides the major um, uh, uh, the main uh, BSP, the board support package, the hall driver for all the peripherals in the microcontroller, the TCIP driver, and the middleware libraries. This has been already integrated with the Wolf SSL software libraries, and the sample complete sample application can be downloaded from the Wolf SSL uh, website or from the GitHub site. So the, the solution is available for the RX 72N and RX 65N device. So with this, I will turn over to Chris and he's going to share more detail of the Wolf SSL product and benchmark result uh, uh, with RX devices. Thanks, Nalima. And hello everyone, this is Chris Conlon with Wolf SSL. Um, as uh, you heard I'm an engineering manager with Wolf SSL. I'm based in our Bozeman, Montana office. And I've got a couple slides here today for you to tell you a little bit about Wolf SSL, first of all, and then how we can integrate and take advantage of the Renesas, RX, and TSIP platforms. So at Wolf SSL, we focus on three main areas. Um, the first one being securing data at rest. This is done using cryptography in our WolfCrypt library. Uh, the second main area is securing data in transit. This is done um, using SSL and TLS or SSH um, over a number of different transport mediums. And then the third kind of key area is securing firmware updates um, secured in transit with our SSL and TLS or SSH library, um, optionally over MQTT, and then also tying in um, our secure bootloader called WolfBoot. So Wolf SSL as a company started in 2004. MySQL needed a clean room implementation of SSL. Uh, we wrote our first SSL library, which was called Yazl in 2004. That was in C++ and stood for yet another SSL. Between 2004 and 2006, um, we really got a lot of demand for a C library instead of a C++ one. And so we rewrote it again uh, from scratch, this time in C, that was called C Yazl. And then we renamed that in 2014 as Wolf SSL, uh, just to be more consistent across product naming, um, easier to understand, and to fit our company culture a little better. Um, so Wolf SSL is still our main product um, today. As a company, we've been growing ever since we were founded. So in 2011, we were three people. Now in 2020, we're above 30. We have over a thousand commercial customers using Wolf SSL products. 17 resale partners, and we estimate we secure somewhere around 2 billion active connections at any one time on the internet. This slide shows our current product lineup. So our main product is Wolf SSL, our lightweight SSL and TLS library. Underneath that sits WolfCrypt, our cryptography library. There's a couple of validated and certified versions of WolfCrypt available for FIPS 140-2 and D178. We also, also have an asynchronous crypto module for users on the server side that would like to, to do many parallel uh, TLS connections. We have an MQTT client library called Wolf MQTT, an SSH implementation, uh, TPM 2.0 library, and our newest product in the last year is a secure bootloader called WolfBoot. All those main products on the first line are written in C. We do have users that would like to use this from other languages. So on the second line there is showing you a number of language wrappers we have available. For Java users, we have JCE and JC, JSSE providers. We also have a thin JNI wrapper. We have a C-sharp wrapper, a Python wrapper, and a JavaScript wrapper. And on the third row, this is a set of applications we have available. We have an SSL termination proxy, a simple certificate enrollment protocol implementation, a secure update solution, a command line utility, uh, we do offer commercial support packages and feature additions to curl and we have a version of curl that's uh, pared down 
version meant for research constrained devices, devices, which is called Tiny Curl. All these products are dual licensed under both a commercial license and an open source license, either GPL V2 or V3. And being security uh, minded and releasing security products, testing is, is one of the most important things for us. And so we put a lot of time and effort into making sure we're doing the right kinds of testing and adding new types of testing on a regular basis. So we do everything from API unit testing to cypher suite testing. We do algorithm testing to make sure we haven't broken algorithm functionality. We do benchmark testing to make sure we haven't slowed down algorithms. We do static analysis with tools like Coverity, ScanBuild, and Facebook's Infer. Um, we detect memory errors with Valgrind and Clang's fSanitize address. We do interop testing against all the major SSL TLS implementations that people are using today. We do real world builds with our own customers' configurations so we, we know we're not breaking their builds. Uh, compiler testing against several different compilers. Um, peer review and third party testing. We do fuzz testing with uh, six different fuzz testers now. And all this is wrapped up into a continuous integration cycle that uses Jenkins with more expanded tests being tested nightly. So if we look at Wolf SSL, um, it, this is our SSL and TLS library. It supports up to the most current standards of the TLS protocol being 1.3 and DTLS being 1.2. Footprint size is 20 to 100 kilobytes, um, depending on how you, what features you have enabled and disabled at compile time. Uh, runtime memory is 1 to 36 kilobytes per session. Um, that's up to, you know, footprint size is up to 20 times smaller than OpenSSL. So that makes, definitely makes it fit more easily in IoT and resource constrained devices. And we do support a number of different operating systems, over 30 now. Um, that's your standard Windows, Linux, Mac, a bunch of different RTOSs, and all the way down to just a bare metal environment. A couple other features of Wolf SSL, we have an OpenSSL compatibility layer. This makes it easier to replace an application that had been using OpenSSL and switch it to Wolf SSL. It maps roughly a thousand of the most commonly used OpenSSL functions down to Wolf SSL native APIs internally. Uh, we've ported to a number of different web servers, including Nginx, Lighty, Mongoose, and Apache. Um, we can take advantage of hardware-based cryptography, which we'll be calling out here uh, using Renaissance TSIP and the RA platform. Wolf SSL is NSA Suite V compatible and also is FIPS 140-2 level one validated. WolfCrypt sits underneath WolfSSL. Um, this provides all the crypto cryptography um, operations. It can be used directly and algorithms can be compiled in and out on a upper algorithm basis. So here you can see all of the algorithms included. This is your standard algorithms in addition to some more progressive ones like cha 20 Poly 1305, and Curve and Ed 255.19. So let's look at what WolfSSL has for Renaissance support. So we've tested Wolf SSL on the Renaissance platforms listed here. That includes the RX65N and 72N with the TSIP uh, driver library. We've tested on the Renaissance Synergy S7G2 and the Renaissance RA6M3. For compiler and IDE support, we've tested with both Renaissance E Squared Studio and CS Plus. And we try to make it easy for you to get started quickly um, by offering a couple helpful things. So we ship sample and demo applications, a WolfCrypt test application. This lets you verify the cryptography algorithms are running correctly on your platform. We have a WolfCrypt benchmark application. This lets you run WolfCrypt benchmarks directly on your platform. Um, we have a set of documentation to help you get started. And for any issues or problems you encounter, um, we do have a very responsive support team which can help you along the way. So what are the benefits to using TSIP and Wolf SSL? Uh, the first of all, first one is an increase in security. Um, the TSIP allows you to generate keys and store them in hardware. Um, this adds an added tamper resistance versus a software only approach. The second big advantage is an increase in performance. So hardware crypto is, is oftentimes faster than software crypto. And we'll see some benchmarks here in a few slides. 
And the third benefit is a decrease in the footprint size of the WolfSSL library. So allowing, using hardware crypto allows us to compile out some of the software crypto code that would be used otherwise. Um, this can help, especially if you think of something like the AES tables, which are oftentimes around 10 kilobytes in software. Uh, compiling those out you know, definitely will reduce your footprint size of both SSL. So let's look at the structure of a kind of a typical Wolf SSL and TSIP application. Uh, so we have a robot here with a user application. User application might be calling um, Wolf SSL APIs directly for TLS operations. It also might be calling you know, the socket library just for sending uh, plain text data if needed. Now, if we layer TSIP in, the first thing that kind of comes to mind is that your user application might have to call the TSIP API and driver directly. But we've taken that one step further and made it easier on you and we ported a TSIP driver in internal in inside of the Wolf SSL library. So your user applications can still continue just calling the, the Wolf SSL APIs and we'll handle interaction with the TSIP driver internally. So we have four slides next that are showing you some benchmarks of running Wolf SSL on the RX platforms with TSIP. So we're gonna start out with the RX65N so these are a benchmark of algorithms that you can see on the left-hand side, RNG, SHA, SHA-256, and the HMAC SHAs. The, first, the second column is throughput of those algorithms in software only. The third column is throughput of those algorithms that have been TSIP accelerated. And then the last column on the, the fourth and right side column is the performance improvement of, of hardware over software. So as you can see, RNG is six times faster, um, SHA 12 times faster, SHA-256 35 times faster. And then the HMAC SHAs are very similarly reflecting of the underlying SHA performance deltas. So HMAC SHA is 12 times and HMAC SHA-256 is 34 times faster. Here again on the RX65N, um, same format. This is just looking at AES operations. So AES 128 CBC, 256 CBC, 128 GCM, and 256 GCM. Um, you can see that this range is from AES 128 CBC uh, being four times faster, all the way down to AES 256, 256 GCM being 11 times faster. Now here we have the same slides, but these are on the RX 72N platform. So here you can see that the RNG is five times faster, uh, SHA five times faster, SHA-256 is 19 times faster, and then the HMAC SHA is five times faster, and HMAC SHA-256, 19 times faster. And here we have the AES performance numbers. Uh, you can see AES-128 CBC is three times faster. That goes up to AES-256 GCM, which you'll see a six, six times performance increase. So how do you get started using Wolf SSL and TSIP? Uh, Nalima briefly mentioned it as well, uh, but first of all, you'll want to download Wolf SSL from our website. You can either download the stable releases from our download page, or you can download us from GitHub at github.com slash Wolf SSL. Um, we have a set of documentation published both in English and in Japanese, and some sample applications located at these locations in the download package. So under the IDE slash Renaissance slash Eastward Studio directory, we have one directory for the RX72N and Vision Kit. And then we have another directory for the GR rows, which would be the RX65N. And in addition to that, we have a few web pages as linked on this slide that will give you some helpful information about um, Renaissance support inside of Wolf SSL. So in summary, um, as Nalima was mentioning, TSIP behaves like a hardware firewall, which protects uh, the key and the crypto elements. It's, it's more than just a simple, you know, AES or TN, TRNG peripheral, since it can generate and store keys inside of the module as well. Um, any keys that are inside the TSIP are never stored and never exported outside of the hardware module. Um, Wolf SSL, which is, you know, widely used in the market today, um, can provide you with some great performance and security features. 
and the collaboration between Wolf Hustle and Renaissance hopefully will make your project a success and a more secure project in the future. So we'd like to open it up for question and answers. Um, first, I do want to say, mention that Wolf SSL provides free pre-sales support. Uh, you can reach out to our support team directly by emailing us at support at wolfssl.com. Um, if you'd like to get in contact with Renaissance, we have their uh, contact URL located at the bottom of this slide, which will direct you towards the right location. So thank you, and, and we'll open it up for any questions you may have at this time. Yep, so if you have any questions, um, feel free to just type them up in the Q&A box. Uh, so the question is, is the presentation available for download? Uh, yes, we will be, um, this presentation is recorded and so um, we will be, uh, we'll be uploading it either to the Wolf SSL, YouTube, or um, Renaissance may have a different way to do it, but it will be recorded and um, sent um, to those who uh, request it. Any other questions? Again, if uh, a question does come up a little bit later um, and you want to ask, uh, you can definitely reach out to both, with both SSL and Renaissance um, for any um, additional questions um, or any support that uh, might require a bit of a longer answer. Um, but if there are no further questions for today, uh, I'd like to thank everyone for joining this webinar. Um, as I said, the webinar um, is being recorded and it will be available on demand shortly. Um, and a big thanks to both uh, Chris and Alima for leading us on today's topic. Um, thank you so much for coming and I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Thank you everybody.